What if we're at the point where we need to stop worrying about who is Breeze and we need to start thinking about who's the biggest liability right now on the show? What if this whole season we were being misled from the real villain who I think just might be? What's going on everyone? Just be here and we're breaking down the latest episode of Power Book 3 Raising Canaan Season 3 Episode 9 titled home to roost we're diving into the biggest and meatiest part of this episode right now let's go so we pick up in this episode on the heels of rock taking out juliana who was the colombian connect to Ronnie and Kanan's organization for his and Kanan's brown product supply. And while he's waiting for a potential re-up, he notices something's a bit off in the timing of the delivery with his crew. And before he can pull out, he gets dropped on by Joaquin, who is Juliana's cousin, and his men. He tells him that not only is he just done, the only reason he's not taking him out right now and he's still breathing is because Snaps and Pops begged him not to. So that shows you that that that's respect in the streets, even on different parts and across races, that some boundaries just you don't you don't cross, particularly if you are regarded in the business, you will honor those things. And so that shows us more about Snaps and Pops and how, you know, they do carry some weight with them in the game. So Ronnie goes and confronts them about it and they tell him, look, regardless of what's going on and what's happening, you owe us money and you need to go make it right. So figure it out, basically. So Ronnie's whole thing is that he's thinking that Rock, again, is the cause of all of his issues. And so the reality right now is that his and Kanan's organization is without a supplier. Now, they can always go back to moving product from Simrad, who was supplying Kian earlier in this season. But now I think we'll see the difference. Maybe in the next episode, Kanan will put that forth as an option and Ronnie will kick it back. And this is probably where we might see them have their first major disagreement. And Kanan will probably realize that, oh, I'm not in charge here. So let's see how this goes ahead and plays out because Rock is moving plenty of weight from her new supply and her new connects. And so she doesn't have that issue. But at this stage, she is competition. And you know, Ronnie doesn't like anyone getting in his way. Particularly, he has no love for Rock. So I don't know how this is going to play out. I mean, what do you guys think about it? Because they're hinting at some things and about Rock and whatnot. But we know that Patina Miller is a major character on the show. And so I don't know where they're trying to head with that in all seriousness. But let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. This episode also focuses a lot on closing in on a lot of open plot points, such as Detective Burke's case, which has now been closed by the NYPD Internal Affairs Department. But her father, Patrick, he just won't let up based on the clues he's seen so far and his conversation particularly in the previous episodes with Nicole Bingham's father so now his gears are running inside his mind about Detective Howard and a prediction that I made about a few videos ago has actually now come true as well where I said that Captain Baptiste Patrick Agent Preston Tanner and I also said eventually they probably loop in Detective Ogden as well but they've now all for the most part gotten together to exchange notes and investigate Howard for his possible involvement in Burke's case. But not just that, also mob and street product related activity on the whole he might be involved in. So Captain Baptiste's line about there not being any such thing as a coincidence in South Jamaica, Queens is important and that gets all of their gears turning in their minds. That they are intentionally being misled and misdirected. So Detective Howard for the most of the season, he has been walking around confident that he got away with what he did to Burke and other things he done inside the past as well to cover things up. And somewhat feels like and carries himself like he's invulnerable and continues to help out Rock by, in this episode, locating Lulu, this time with the help of some of the dirty cops. One of them whom also looks like he might have been the same one trying to shake down Rock earlier this season when she was a landlord. Looks like the same cop there as well. So that shows there's a lot of uh, affiliation going on here and uh, Howard's really involved with a lot of the bad things. So they grab Lulu and stash him away where Detective Howard now threatens him because Lulu's running his mouth, right? He, he's drunk, he's all over the place, and, you know, he's upset and he's angry, disappointed, 
all this kind of stuff. And so he starts confessing basically as much crimes as possible uh, to Detective Howard and saying what he knows and what he can go ahead and say, things that he's been involved in, all this kind of stuff. All throughout this episode, we see him just completely unhinged after being forced to take out Scrap's mother, Chantel. So he's become a horrible drunk, running into cars, and even going as far as sticking up a liquor store because he was out of money to pay for it himself. But in a surprising and somewhat not so surprising turn of events, maybe for people who were kind of seeing it headed in this direction for a while. So Rock and Marvin get their hands on Lulu and he's pretty much a threat right now because again, he's running his mouth too much and he starts to beg for his life as they take him from the stash house then on the road. Now, we don't know where they're taking him, but at this stage, it's pretty heartbreaking uh, to continue to hear him and continue to say, Marv, you know, you're my big brother. Don't let her delete me. And how he's not ready to go and he's just crying and sobbing. And it's just, watching it has broke my heart, man. Just knowing that this could potentially be happening. And then he eventually sort of accepts that it's inevitable because he knows the rules of the streets. And so he just kind of says to them, you know, if you got to do it, just don't leave my body out here alone, man. And so, you know, I, I just looking at all of this and seeing how this is all turning out and them also looping in Jukebox's storyline here with Agent Tanner now interrogating her, trying to get her to flip. But, you know, Juke is a, she's a G. She's not going to flip. Hold on real quickly. You guys want to see something crazy? Over 99% of you guys that watch my content are not subscribed. So I'm asking real quickly, if you don't mind, just hit the like button and hit subscribe real quickly. I'd love to keep on giving this content to you guys and lets me know that people actually are interested. Feel free to do that, man. Really appreciate it a lot. Would help me out a long way in growing my small channel. Thanks. Now back to the video. The purpose of them calling this episode Home to Roost is to really tie together all of these different elements and showing every major bad decision everyone's been making all season long and even prior to this season is now coming back to haunt them. And so one of my, you know, predictions here that I'll put out is the fact that Detective Howard is a problem, right? For both sides of the law at this stage. He let Rock know that he was aware that the FBI is looking into Marvin. In this episode, we also saw where Gerald admitted to Marvin that, you know, I had been working with the FBI to give them something on you in exchange for them pardoning me for some stuff. Now, Howard also knew some of this to an extent and even admitted to pointing the FBI in Marvin's direction so that they can look away from Rock and Kanan so he can protect them in the way I guess he feels as he's protecting them. So take that prediction any way you want. He's now a problem for both sides of the law. And we've been looking at Breeze and Ronnie as Maisie Breeze and all that kind of stuff all season. And I started to now really look at them tying this whole thing with Burke together that happened in episode one of the season. And home to roost is a lot of the bad decisions, not just the other characters are making, but particularly Detective Howard has been making that may now be coming to a head. So... Let's see what happens in episode 10. I'm going to hold back from too many other predictions because this show is unpredictable. I talked about in my live stream how the unique death took me and everyone by surprise. And so I'm not going to presume to let you guys feel like I have any clue what's going to happen in the next episode. But I do look forward to talking about it with you guys again at the end of it. Let me know what you think about it. Episode inside the comments, guys. What do you think that I got right? What do you think that I got wrong? Do you think there's something I'm not looking at too closely or missing with any specific details? Let me know what you think about it inside the comments. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Until next time, peace.